If you want to go after an athlete, one of my athletes, you go after one that doesn't do the right things. You don't downgrade him because he does everything right and may not play as well on Saturday. And you let us make that decision. That's why I don't read the newspaper. Because it's garbage. And the editor that let it come out is garbage. Attacking an amateur athlete for doing everything right. And then you want to write articles about guys that don't do things right and downgrade them, the ones that do make plays. Are you kidding me? Where are we at in society today? Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not a, I'm not a kid. Write something about me or our coaches. Don't write about a kid that does everything right, that's heart's broken, and then say that the coaches said he was scared. That ain't true. And then to say that we made that decision because Donovan Woods, because he threatened to transfer, that's not true. So get your facts straight. And I hope someday you have a child and somebody be downgrades them and belittles them and you have to look them in the eye and say, you know what, it's okay. They're supposed to be mature adults, but they're really not. Who's the kid here? Who's the kid here? Are you kidding me? That's all I got to say. It makes me want to puke. You know, I have a, uh, I have an, a 14-year-old son. I have three sons, 11, 14, and 19. My 14-year-old can do that to a T. <laughs> And see, that would have been, uh, I'm getting ready to be 49, so he would have been five or so around that time, or six, whatever the math is. And he could do it like a month later in first grade. Um, essentially at the talent contest, he could do that. Well, you know who else can do it? Uh, I'm going to roll the clip. I'm going to show okay. you someone else that can do it. All right, Justin Bieber's taking over Radio Disney right now. Um, so it seems to be like a theme in your life, never say never. How do you, what, what is one other thing that you still haven't done that you want to accomplish? I mean, Oh, I want to go records? skydiving. What? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just, something I really want to do. It's like, I, I went bungee jumping. It was a lot of fun. Come so. out for me. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> That's my uh, ringtone for everything. Oh, it is? <laughs> Come after me. I'm a man. I'm, I'm 40. 40. <laughs> <laughs> he said, don't after some kid who's been doing everything right now did you hear the second part of that after that happened what I did yeah I, I gotta show it okay I, gotta I, didn't, I didn't know you knew it. that so this is a press conference check out what happens Cowboys head coach Mike Gundy was on hand to support his new offensive coordinator before being rudely interrupted by a phone call <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, Gundy has a Justin Bieber ringtone, coincidentally, after we found out this weekend that Bieber's ringtone is part of Gundy's infamous I'm a man tirade a few years ago, which made national headlines. So, touche, Bieber. Well, I changed mine last night. I figured if he was going to use my ringtone, that I should certainly use his ringtone. <laughs> Are you a Bieber fan? Yeah, you know, what? Are you a Bieber fan? Oh, I am now. I would prefer that he uh, uh, come and sing and perform a concert here and uh, uh, buy a suite. We still have some available. Isn't that awesome? Now, but seriously, you've got a lot of, of positive perceptions from that speech. Can you talk about something that maybe hasn't been talked about as much? Well, after that, uh, it was very popular for a year and a half, two years, uh, when we would go on the road and play games. Uh, the opponent's fans, they were, they were on me big time. But the benefits that we received in recruiting from that were unbelievable. I could be, I was on the East Coast, I was at a, uh, at a, in a home in South Carolina, and, and I could be in Arizona or California in an environment where they really shouldn't know anything about it. And either a parent or a grandparent uh, would bring that up in a recruiting 
visit, and they loved it. Uh, I didn't, obviously didn't plan it, um, and it just kind of happened, and I got uh, increasingly frustrated as it went on during the rant. Uh, but I, I thought I did really well. There, there wasn't any cussing involved in it. Um, and so, but up until just a month ago, when uh, we had a family on campus and they were from Texas and the mom and the dad and uh, their son who were recruiting was in my office and we had a good conversation and they started to take pictures and then walked out. And the dad who is close to my age, probably, he had to be probably 45, he stayed back and they kind of walked through my assistant's um, office and he said, hey, I love your rant. And I said, Really, and he said, "Oh, as soon as I saw that, I knew if he ever wanted to, play, if he was good enough to play, I was going to send him to you." And so it's been surprising how many people have taken note of that. And and so I'd like maybe if we can zip back to the beginning of your career, mm -hmm. you took over at a time where the program history was below 500. That's correct, right? Mm -hmm. And so, kind of talk to me about those first couple of years and the evolution. Well, Oklahoma State had had some good years, but more of not as successful years. And uh, our, our overall winning percentage was below 500, as you had mentioned. And our facilities were really down. Uh, we were in the process of building a stadium and a new facility, which we have completed now. But prior to that, our first year was really difficult. Um, and it was interesting, Larry Fedora, who's the head coach now at North Carolina, uh, he was our offensive coordinator. And Oklahoma State had always been a traditional offense where we had huddled up and really ran the ball, didn't throw it as much. And Larry came in, and we were no huddle, moved real fast. And our conference and our fans, they weren't really used to that style of play. And we weren't very good anyway. And they were booing us during the games because they thought we were letting the clock expire when essentially we were trying to get a good play called. And that first year was so tough. I remember um, being on the road and losing, getting on the plane and coming home and thinking about how to handle the team to keep their spirits up and try to, to build a little bit every year. Um, we, we did a little better toward the end. Uh, we had a big win. We, we beat Texas Tech toward the end of the season my first year, and they were, I think, 12th in the country. And we beat them, and that, that really helped our program. And then the next couple years, we were able to get in bowl games and win. And then the rest took off. We, we recruited some, some quality people that ended up being really good players. Uh, but during that time, there was a lot of hours uh, and a lot of counseling with players and trying to develop that winning attitude to keep people moving in the right direction. Yeah, and it's, I think it's really interesting because you, you look at a football infrastructure, how many players do you have on your roster? We'll, we'll have 130 to 135. So think about that. So you're managing that. And then in support staff, mm -hmm. your entire support staff, how many do you have? Between 25 and 30 that are in our staff meetings every day. And then if, if you filter into equipment staff, training staff, strength staff, um, it's going to be around 70 people that, that, are, that are with our players almost every day. So you're managing essentially 200 people. Correct. Yeah. And so I, I'd like to show just what an organizational chart looks like. Basically, you have an offensive and a defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. and then you have nine position coach, correct? That's correct. So can you walk me through like what a halftime speech would look like? Well, for us at halftime, um, uh, as soon as we get in, the coaches, offensive coaches go in one area, defensive coaches go in another, and we talk about the first half. Um, if there are issues, um, we make those corrections first, and then things that have worked for us, they, they'll talk about whether um, we feel like they can be successful in the second half or we need to make a few changes. That has, to, that has to happen in about four to five minutes. During that time, the players are using the restroom, eating energy bars, um, Gatorade, hydration, so on and so forth. Um, could be stretching if they... If they had bumps and bruises, they'll be in the, in the training room. And they know that they have about uh, five to six minutes to get back to a location in the locker room. And when the coaches break up from their meetings, each one of them will go to their position group. They'll be sitting in a specific area. They'll get information from that coach. And they have four minutes for that. And then once that's complete, they'll come together as an offense. 
and a defense, and the coordinators will get in front and talk to them. There's about three minutes. Um, in between that, our special teams coordinator, he'll grab players individually and talk about if we had an issue with a specific guy on special teams. Um, once they're completed, once that's finished, that, that takes about three minutes. Then they come together, and I grab them for about 60 seconds, and then we go back out for the second half. And so the efficiency has to sure. be outstanding. Sure. Or, you know, it's interesting. We talk about coaches and, and uh, the, the time that we've spent here with all the other coaches. There's, there's different ways to win and be successful. Um, we rely on uh, being very efficient, organization, structure. Um, we've had, let's see, this is June, middle of June. Since the middle of May, we've had all of our 29 practices for August completed and done um, from, from breakfast to dinner uh, throughout the day. All the meetings, what we're going to do in practice, how long we're going to be out there, how long the stations are going to be. And that has helped us. Um, for me to go to bed at night and sleep, I have to know that everything's planned accordingly and we're structured for the next two to three months in advance.